that song with the word good? I know. Isn't that not obvious? It's really nice. It's not obvious. I recently was fathoming the harmonies in the chorus. Hey, now you see you want it back. Now that it's just too late. Well, ah! No, the harmonies and the fucking ad libs on 1989 are second to none. That is just one of the many things that we will be discussing we'll today. be discussing today oh gosh guys we are so 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 excited because <laughs> we are starting a bit of a new series a today new series. um yeah. this has been something that we've been wanting to do for a few months now mm. Um, originally, we actually were like, we should start with Lover because Lover's not getting the love that it deserves. Wait, that's actually but how our channel came to be. The, like, Lover, <laughs> Lover is actually the dismissal of Lover <laughs> is the reason this channel exists. It really is. We were so <laughs> passionate that we had to simply start a video. Literally, a we also channel. have Lover behind us right now. Yeah, um, the pop girlies are having a moment. You know, time has gone on. Taylor announced Speak Now. All of these mm. things have happened that have just meant that we haven't been able to start it till now. Yeah. And then, you know, with 1989 TV very fast approaching, it just sort of got to the point where we were like, you know, maybe we need to start it with 1989. We've yeah. already done a breakdown. As you can see by the title, we're calling it Why We Love. Yes, absolutely. Followed That's by the album. That's the vibes. We really just wanted to have another series where we could express. <laughs> Our love. Our love for an album <laughs> in a slightly different format. We're yes. not going to be listening to the songs today. We're just no. going to be expressing our thoughts and opinions and feelings. Yes. And also maybe, which I, I was going to say to you, um, maybe like a little bit more like our personal relationship with the album. Absolutely. Mm. I think that the, what I'm thinking this series will be is... Pretty much everything that we don't really get to say yeah. in our breakdowns. Absolutely. Our breakdowns are very much so, you know, lyric by lyric, what's going on here yeah. with a bit of our take on like the production and stuff. And we will touch on things like that today a little bit, but yes, yeah. we kind of want to talk more broadly about what's going on yeah. in these specific eras mm. and albums. Mm. That's just unique to that era mm. and makes it so lovable for everything that it is mm. and that includes our personal relationship to yes, these albums absolutely oh i'm so excited so it's really just a bit of a chatty chat guys we're this here is, for a chatty chat this is the a chatty chatty chat part of chats and reacts it is so get it yourself is. a coffee a tea yes. you deserve a tea yes um and let's just have a little chat shall mm -hmm. we before we dive into things, I do think that we need to be addressing the elephant in the room, which is that my hair oh is my gone. God, of course, your hair. My hair is gone. <laughs> it is gone in preparation for 1989 yeah. TV. I'm aware it looks nothing like Taylor's short hair in 1989, but you know, it's it's a haircut nonetheless. Guys, give which Emily. Which 1989 is associated with. Give Emily all your love in the comments about how cute she looks. Thank you. She, you know, it's a big change. It is a big it's change. It's not exactly what she was wanting. No. So, but I I'm think coming she looks to terms with it. Super, super cute. It's and giving, I love the short hair. It's giving Pixie. It's yeah. giving Alice from Twilight. Oh, it's we giving, stand. you know. Oh, where to begin with the 1989? <laughs> it's, it's just so fucking such iconic. An iconic album. Um, if you don't know, it is her fifth uh, studio album yes. and her first real complete pop album. Yes. So it stands, it, you know, it is a huge shift in Taylor's discography and in her career and, you know, it, it, for so many reasons is the reason that she is the Taylor Swift. Absolutely. That's a good fucking point. <laughs> That is a good point. You know, the Taylor Swift that we know today mm. is more pop Taylor than anything else. Yes. We kind of lose the country side of her mm. now. And even the more alternative that came out in Folklore and Evermore. Like, yeah. when you think of Taylor Swift, you think of pop star. Yeah. And that started here with this album. Absolutely. I, I do really think that that's a really natural place to begin, actually. Yeah. The fact that this was just so experimental mm. and so new and different for Taylor coming from that country background. Of course, as you guys would know, there is a little bit of the beginnings of a crossover happening in Red. Mm. Um, but Red is just 
so different to 1989. No, and we've talked about this before, but we really feel like in Red, she was trying, she wanted to go more pop, but she had restrictions around her with her record label and just people being like, what the fuck are you doing? Why would you do that? Like, you're a, you're a country artist. Yeah. So we see that in like, I knew you were trouble and we're never getting back together in 22. Like that's what was coming to her. And those were her most successful, you know, hits from that album. Yeah. So to come into 1989, like you, you totally make sense that it happened, but nothing could have prepared you, I don't think, for plus, pressing play on 1989 and hearing well to, Welcome to New York. No, no, I need to just quickly say something. Welcome to New York is such a superior album opener it's and so good. if you haven't fathomed maybe you've never been to new york because i hadn't fathomed and then i went to new york and i was like holy shit <laughs> holy shit is the only way to she has captured what that city is in a song and it's yeah. very alarming yeah. that she was yeah. able to do that and it's, yeah. everything she says in that song it's a new soundtrack like that is what 1989 is yeah it's it's so fresh yeah. and so new for her. Mm. Oh my God. Like, what the hell is happening? What the fuck is happening? I like, completely agree. If you agree. go back to that point in her discography and have only hearing, like, what we heard before and then to hear that... It's a lot. It is. It's a lot. It's interesting as well to consider the fact that um, actually our first real taste of 1989 did come in the form of Shake It Off being mm. the lead single, um, mm -hmm. which obviously has just become arguably her biggest hit to date. Mm. You know, I think people who are not Taylor Swift fans mm. specifically, that's the song they think of yeah. when they think, what's a Taylor Swift song? Yeah. It's Shake It Off. Yeah. And that's really fascinating, you know, because at the time, um, Having been a fan since debut, it was really interesting to get a song like Shake It Off because it was actually my first mm. initial instinct gut reaction to Shake It Off was like, oh, this is a good song. Yeah. It's a bop. Yeah. But it's very different to what I'm used to from Taylor. Mm. And, you know, it's still to this day, I think that just sonically, mm. Shake It Off it falls to the bottom of my favorite songs of 1989. Mm -hmm. So having that be the first thing that we heard when leading into the 1989 era, it kind of made me nervous at first, if mm -hmm. I'm honest. I was a little bit like, what am I actually going to get on this album? Yeah. Am I going to love it as much as I've loved her first four albums? And obviously, yeah. I was completely blown away. And I think that that's where we get the yeah. hitting play on Welcome, Welcome to, to New York. York and then experiencing the album through, I died and came back to life. Yeah. <laughs> like this is like my entire personality is 1989 since the day that I pressed play on Welcome to New York. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. And Shake It Off, I think like a lot of people had that kind of reaction to. Um, and like her, her, you know, that's why it's so hard. People judge Taylor Swift off of her singles. And I do think that that first single is always a bit more for the masses. Um, but her actual discography is, you know, extremely different and mm. very deep. And, you know, obviously we know one of the best lyricists of all, the lyricists of our generation. Absolutely. Um, so it is interesting with the Shake It Off being like, you know, what people judge the album on because it's obviously so much more than that in saying that though my experience with shake it off mm. i was not a full-blown swifty at this point i only followed or knew of like the singles mostly i knew some songs off red but not the entire album and i remember when shake it off came out i was so fucking obsessed with that song yeah okay yeah <laughs> i remember driving from sydney we were doing like a big drive up to the, the coast and i was playing it on repeat and tim mm. wanted to kill me he was like you need to stop with this song and i was like it's so good so I was like the typical like mass person that was obsessed with that song. Yeah. I think that that's actually a really important thing to note though. Like the difference mm -hmm. in, in how you respond to hearing it for the yes. first time as a really big Taylor Swift fan yeah. and as a casual listener. Yeah. I think that it really goes to show that Taylor always knows mm. what it is that she needs to release and what's, what's going to be a mm. good lead single. What's going to be a good single full stop. Like what's going to skyrocket to the top of the charts. Yes. Um, because, you know, someone like me, I'm coming at it from an angle of I know every single Taylor Swift song today. Yeah. This is very different. Yeah. What do I do with this? Yeah, absolutely. Whereas you're listening to it from this perspective of like, I just want to listen to a hit on the radio. Exactly. And this one's and fucking this one's good. good. Yeah, totally. It's so interesting. It it's is a, interesting. It's a, it's a very different relationship, I think, you have with an artist once you're like a fan fan and you're listening through the album as an album. Yeah. 
And I don't know what I was doing at that time in my life, but I think I was in this weird phase of like, Growing up, I listened to albums on my Disman, and then I had an iPod. That really shows our age. I know. Senior Swifties over yeah, here. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and then there was this weird phase in my life where, like, I had an iPod and stuff, but I was not very good at, like, the music, putting it on and stuff. Like, I would, yep. my friends would do it for yep. me, and I would just kind of, like, go with whatever they mm-hmm. were putting on my iPod. And then there was, like, Spotify, where Taylor wasn't on. No. During 1989 era. Yeah. And... I was like, I didn't have the paid version. I had like the shitty oh, yeah, the, the yeah. version where you couldn't even choose what you were listening yeah. to. That was a weird time for me. Now thinking about what music is in my life and how it's like, honestly, probably like the center of my universe. It's so interesting to think about when it wasn't or when it mm. was like, when I was a lot, I just, I didn't, hadn't found myself yet. Yeah. I didn't know what I would like to listen to, what I wanted to yeah. do. And so I missed out on really knowing albums Mm -hmm. i want to jump back to where we started in terms of this being such a new sound for taylor swift Mm -hmm. and and this just being so different in terms of moving entirely into pop with 1989 and really focus on the production because there's several things that i i I need to say about this and Mm -hmm. i do think that this is going to be a lengthy Mm -hmm. conversation there's so many things to say about the production so many things to say (laughs) jumping back to even that conversation around red if you don't know taylor's first experience of working with max martin and johan shellback was on red and that's where we do get those more like kind of pop crossover songs that Mm. you mentioned like we're never getting back together i knew you were trouble 22 Mm -hmm. they're all max martin songs Mm. um so i do think that was a really important step for her creatively to start Mm. working with max martin Mm. is literally the pop songwriter like I feel like a lot of people know this, but just in case you don't, like this man is responsible for all of the hits of like Britney Spears, NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, like Kelly Clarkson, the pop man. This man is Everyone. pop personified. Yeah. This man, this is his job. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a really interesting step for her to have taken, like d- done that with Red. Mm. And then I guess prove mm. to her label at the time that, what she's coming up with in it's this good. pop space with these songwriters yeah. is incredible. And that might have very likely been that that green light mm-hmm. for her to actually be able to move over to pop in yeah, terms of getting that permission from her yeah. from her label. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that that's so courageous, really. Like not, not, not many people switch genres or do something different. And no. I think like, like you were saying, as fans, sometimes we can be quite shocked by what that lead yeah. single is, right? Because she is always experimenting and we do have to kind of trust that process as fans and and lean into new sounds and that's why she's always thanking the fans for supporting that yeah. because I think that it was so not different everyone for can do that there's one theme though that runs very consistent regardless of her sound and that's her storytelling yeah absolutely she's just too good it doesn't matter how it comes yeah. out and at the end of the day <laughs> that is what fans connect to yeah. the most like when it really comes down to it yeah we're obsessed with her storytelling we're mm. obsessed with her her songwriting and mm. and the way that we're able to connect with her lyrics so it, it ultimately doesn't even matter what kind of production she's got behind it mm. i mean i think that's even evident in the fact that since debut she's had pop versions of songs be released mm. she had a pop version of teardrops on my guitar yeah. she had a pop version of love story and you belong with me the other thing that absolutely needs to be said here and is absolutely one of the- our favorite things about 1989 <laughs> is that this is our first appearance of jack antonoff yeah. now oh I will die on the hill History was that changed. Taylor Swift invented Jack Antonoff. Oh, yeah. Jack Antonoff is he known today that. as the guy who produces and writes for all the pop girlies. Yeah. And it's so generic. And, of course, Taylor Swift is doing that. And all of this oh, bullshit. Oh, that's so frustrating. Jack Antonoff would not be a music producer for artists outside of himself and Bleachers if it weren't for Taylor Swift being like, I like what you're doing for yeah. me here. If you don't know, the first song they ever wrote together was Sweeter Than Fiction. And then that was her first taste of what Jack can do. And then she was like, I think I want you to work on my next album, which is 1989. So, and now we know that Sweeter Than Fiction is the bonus track. Yes. So very exciting that we are getting that yes. on 1989 TV. Because, yeah, it's all started there. And it's really important to... I think their relationship has turned into something so beautiful and incredible. And what they've done together is just absolutely mind-blowing. Absolutely. Um, and to... You know, it all started with Sweeter Than Fiction and all started with Taylor being like, 
yes, I believe in you. And it's so amazing to think about how this all panned out so perfectly because there's a few different things about the 1989 sound mm. that I believe are more coincidental than anything, which is just such magic. 1989 does have such a synth 80s pop sound to it. Yeah. Um, something that Taylor Swift herself said about the inspiration for an album called 1989 mm. she she was think she said that she was thinking about the fact that she was born in 1989 and that this album knowing that she wanted to move into pop was going to be a rebirth for her so her birth year is 1989 and this mm. was her rebirth so mm. to name it 1989 felt so right mm. but then to also have that pop synth element to the production on 1989 it tied in so well to the fact that this album was yeah. already going to be called 1989 she's taken the 80s sound and called it 1989 and then we get someone like jack antonoff who already in his own music was demonstrating a real passion and yeah. creativity for an 80s synth sound. Totally. This is something that is so present in all of Bleach's music, even Absolutely. up until today. And so to work with him for this project is just absolute perfection. She chose the right man for the job. Oh and then... God. And Max perfectly was Max was too. able like, to match that so well. Yeah, exactly. And I would love to know what the first song was that they wrote for 1989. But we know that she wrote I Wish You Would to track. Yes. So that was Jack's track and she wrote over the top of that track. And I wonder also if that maybe would have been the first time she did that for an album anyway. Like, I'm not sure if she wrote to track for 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 Red. If I'm not mistaken, I do believe that 1989 was yeah. the first time she dabbled yeah. in writing to track. And I also believe that Out of the Woods was, was written also, to track as yes, well, that, which yeah. is another Jack produced song on this it album. It makes sense that the Jack songs were the ones that she wrote to track because I feel like that's naturally how they're collaboration would have begun right she heard a track she likes she's like oh I like that yeah. I'm gonna try and sing over it I sang over it I like it can we work together and Jack's like oh you like what I do like yeah. so it's really quite a lot then he's gone on to work with obviously Lord Lana so many other incredible artists that just have I'm so changed sorry music have changed the industry I need to touch on what you said there about this writing to track being like the first the first mm. instance of this because it's really fascinating to then Obviously, we know today that Taylor and Jack are able to build songs together from the ground mm. up. So mm. Taylor's not always writing to Jack's tracks already. No. But this has also then come up with Aaron, Aaron Desna. Oh my god, yeah. She started writing to track with him on Folklore, <sighs> tracks he'd already created, and now they can build songs from the ground up together. Very fascinating. It's, it's really like interesting that... She's attracted to what they're already doing yes. before they get into a room and write together. And in some ways, it kind of makes perfect sense that that is how you kind of form those real mm. musical bonds because she's already got a piece of music in front of her that she can identify that she loves mm. before she chooses to actually work with them, right? No, it's, it's not like sitting in a room with someone that you don't really know what they do and then being like, can we figure this out? It's like, I already know I love what you do. That's so special about this album. So special. It is so special that she figured this out yeah. with this album. And that Jack sound already, like, it is 1989. Like, I Wish You Would is 1989. That sound out of the woods, like, that, it's just a fucking unique sound. I'm so sorry. Like, no other album sounds like this. Yes, it has that influence of that 80s synth and you know you can definitely tie it back to that but it's still it's so, so modern unique. in its own way so modern i like the blank space i have no idea what's happening there like the sound of that holy shit it's, it's amazing. so superior it's amazing it's so fucking superior no it's incredible <laughs> the other thing that i think is so important to bring up with the production and the fact that nothing sounds like 1989 no. is oh. how deeply cohesive this album is and how much how, how incredible that is mm. working with different producers because even outside of Max and Shellback songs mm. and then having the Jack songs, we do also have a few other appearances mm. and somehow it's been able to still come together and form this perfect cohesivity. Mm. But also every track sounds so unique and so different at the same time. Like nothing sounds like I'm hearing the same song twice on this no, album. No, no. And that's also extremely impressive. And I guess why it is, you know, the most awarded pop album in history. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. Or am I confusing that with Fearless? I think it... No. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, Fearless is the most awarded country album Yeah, that's in what history. I was like. It did, however, win her her second album of the year award. Fearless being the first. And that just goes to show how 
incredible it was for her to be able to do something so different in her discography with this album. It was such a risk in the grand scheme of things. Like when we look back on it now, with hindsight, it seems obvious that 1989 had the success that it had. It is. That wasn't fucking obvious. That was such a big risk for her to take to do something that wasn't in that country world. She has the most awarded country album and the most awarded pop album. I'm sorry, this woman. This woman. This woman. It's actually this just, woman! It's too concerning. It also kind of makes sense that it was awarded so heavily as well because of the success of the singles on yeah. this album. Mm. And something that you have said about your own personal relationship to 1989 yes. is that you feel that it's like the world's album. I do. Because there's so mm. many hits on this album. Shake It Off, Blank Space, yeah. Style, mm. Out of the Woods, Bad Blood, yeah. Wildest Dreams. Like the list is endless. Yeah. And honestly, she could have kept going. She could have kept going. Like when this album first came Every out. Every song is a hit. I was, I was truly convinced, truly convinced. To this day, I'm actually upset that I was wrong. <laughs> truly convinced that All You Had To Do Was Stay was going to be the song of 2015. Like mm. I actually thought she was going to release it as a single and that everybody was going to absolutely collapse and die yeah. over the fact that this song exists. <laughs> and it was going to be the biggest hit on the album. And obviously it was never released as a single, so that never happened. Yeah. But like... It's hard to pick 1989, what, what would be the singles there actually every song could be a single it's it's very it's very concerning it's a lot to be able to do that yeah and but i i, I do think it adds to that feeling of feeling like it's the world's album yeah. or it's such a big album that i often find it hard to feel close to it which is so yeah. interesting it's no i completely understand that and i think that, that to explain. that's super valid coming from a place of being a more casual listener yeah. at the time when you are only really listening to the singles on an album mm -hmm. like this and then you go and listen to the album and you realize that you know every second song it makes perfect sense that you feel like it's, it's the like world's album. yeah it's mismatched for me like yeah because i heard because i knew the singles all of them so so well but i didn't know the album songs yeah it feels like there's this imbalance i totally get um, that whereas with every other album moving because obviously from rep onwards i listen to the albums yeah it's like and red is different as well it just doesn't have as many as those hits so no. there's so many more intimate yeah. songs and there's no other album like 1989. Yeah. And I think that's why I'm really excited for 1989 TV. I'm ready to experience this album at the same time as the rest of the world. Yeah. And have new songs to incorporate into that relationship. Like, that's why I've loved these re-records so much. Like, as fans that weren't fans at the time, we have this whole opportunity to get to re-experience the album and know it on a deeper level and really be immersed in the imagery yeah. and the feeling of whatever Taylor's trying to tell us. Like, yeah. it's actually... I've said this so many fucking times. <laughs> I've said this so many times, but it's the biggest blessing as no, a fan. No, it is. It is. I cannot believe she's done this for us. She has no idea. And for me, it's just an expansion of my personality. Yeah. Like, I literally <laughs> cannot believe that there are 1989 songs that I don't already know yeah. and like have to get to know with 1989, Taylor's version. Because like this album is like, I know it sounds funny for me to say that 1989 yeah. is my whole personality, but like <laughs> I can't actually express how these are, these songs are the so same. threaded into my yeah. being. Like it, I identify with this album yeah. so much. That's how that, I feel about rep, and I think I'm yes. gonna have the same feeling. Yeah, with that rep. makes like, sense. Like it feels not okay that there'll be other songs on. Reputation. I can't believe that she withheld aspects of my personality yeah. from me like it's <laughs> just a lot i'm going to have a mental breakdown when we hear it for the first time like i it's actually so much to cope with it right is, now it is i can't believe we're gonna get style taylor's version <laughs> no. no the first i need to talk about the first four songs on okay, this album please. because the audacity of this woman to murder me i honestly need to no her. i'm so sorry welcome to new york blank space <laughs> no, like, style out, out of, of the, the woods. woods and then for me personally all you had to do was stay <laughs> i'm so sorry but you shake it off i'm be so sorry those songs in order like that like that's actually no i get you're it. murdering people you're murdering straight off the bat i'm not okay every time i listen to 1989 i have to brace myself yeah it's it's truly too good of an introduction to the album and i'm so sorry but blank space does not we do not talk about blank space enough no we don't what is actually happening here no. as a fandom we need to actually check ourselves because blank space is the most concerning single she's ever released can, can i, I actually say on this note it's too smart for the 
I need to say on this note, something that was really important that I address in why I love 1989 so much, and this ties in very well with this, is the fact that this is the first time mm. Taylor ever started calling out the media. Oh, I agree. With songs like Shake It Off and Blank morning. Space. I know that we do have songs like Mean and stuff on Speak Now, but it's not the same. No. It's not the same. This album was the first time that she was like, her fa she, I mean, as we all know, 1989 was the height of her fame mm. prior to what we're experiencing right now. Yeah. Um, she was so big, like literally hitting her peak and then releasing this album was just so... The, just catapulted her mm. to a completely different level than even Red did. Yeah. But to have songs like Blank Fucking Space and Shake It Off on there after having already the media having established this narrative about her of like this serial data yeah. who can't keep a guy. Totally. Like both of those songs touch on it and it's fucking genius but in such different ways such different shake ways. it off is so transparency like oh hey yeah. you think that i just date everyone and i can't make him stay i'm just gonna shake it off yeah, like yeah, i don't yeah. give a fuck yeah blank space is like uh, i will play your character play i will your play your fucking role if you and want so me to be this girl it. i'll be this girl for you it's so concerned no what people don't That's people so the, 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 do. people did not fathom blank space and people did no. not fathom look what you made me do and i will die on this hill that people still like the general public do not understand what she's, she's actually too intelligent she, for people no she is and she's too good of a songwriter blank space is very concerning like she sh no one should be able to write a song that good um but back on that point about her um you know addressing the media I, one of my favorite things about 1989 is how subtly it actually does nod to reputation like being something that would come like absolutely it's 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 she's getting fed up yeah but she's still doing it in a playful manner totally she's, she's still, still maintaining the, the girl that the they want her to image. be she's still being the nice girl yeah. she's not rocking the boat too much yeah. she's dabbling in it totally and reputation was the real full up oh, fucking yeah. whatever then and i'm just so, gonna go to town it's so good that you can see that now like you can see that transition from shake it off to look what you made me do or even to I did something bad. Yeah, yeah. The, the the change in attitude. Yeah. The growth in not letting, not caring what people say or do, and actually just speaking her truth. Yeah. It it was always there. It was coming. It no. was coming. It makes so much sense. And that that's why it's so important that we have these songs on 1989. It's so important that she began this here. Yeah. Because. There is a there is an alternate timeline where if Taylor didn't feel confident enough to speak her truth and, and wanted to maintain this good girl image because she was worried about what people would think and say about her, we would not be where we are today. We would not have the... No. Taylor would not be Taylor no. that she is today. She would have, we, she would have like, dropped off. I'm so sorry, but Taylor would not be as successful as she is today. She literally needed to start here with 1989 yeah. actually dabbling mm. in what it is that she really is thinking. To, to, she she, she is to, now known for being like that bitch that, who yeah. fucking speaks up about things. I mean, 1989 was also the era where she spoke up about um, disagreeing with how Apple Music and Spotify oh, were, we were paying small that. artists, which was another way of her speaking up for the first time. This was her most successful album to date and she took it off. She did not put it on streaming. No, it's Imagine alarming. the streams that 1989 would have if she was on streaming during that era. Like, no, Taylor Swift would have already been... She's, she's, I think, now the number two most streamed artist of mm. all time. Not woman, artist of all time. Mm. And she's only like, I think maybe... Ugh, don't quote me on this, but I read the other day something like a billion streams off of overtaking Drake. The weekend. I think, is it The weekend? Yeah. If she had put 1989 on streaming... She would have been, been there years ago. I agree. That's amazing. Yeah. People do not give her credit no. for that. I didn't see anyone else taking their most no. successful no. album off streaming. No. Like the power that that actually had in changing streaming and Spotify was immense. Like no one yeah. else with that kind of power is removing their music and being like, I'm not putting it back on until things change. 
And it's that's that crazy. It's that decision that leads us to speaking up about artists owning their music mm. and going through this entire re-recording process yes. today. Would she have ever done that? Maybe not. No. Like that's a lot. These stepping stones all prove that she was always headed in the direction that she's in now. Yeah. And also, it's just actually you know dissecting her career and her discography in the way that we do is so exciting because it's not obvious how she ended up where she is and I think that that's why we get so passionate when talking about her as a fandom because not many other people have managed to hold on to success like this and to keep coming back to yeah. keep knowing what direction she needs to go in and 1989 is a huge step in that yeah absolutely it's a huge part of the puzzle in how she became the person that she is today. Yeah. I even think in her personal life at this time, which flows into her career, there were so many things that she was doing differently, which I think aligned with starting to be the girl that like didn't give a fuck about things mm -hmm. and like just did what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. She had her first really high profile relationship with Calvin Harris. Yeah. Um, and what I mean by that is obviously we know people that she dated prior to that, but we were not getting an experience of like them being seen in public mm. a lot until she started dating, dating Calvin Harris. She was yeah. just like, do you know what? I'm going to post him on my social media. People are going to know yeah. about this man in my life. She didn't do that no, previously. No. Then we've got the whole girl squad thing. Mm. She's literally like, I am queen B. I'm so sorry, but I am up here. It's actually quite a lot how 1989 TV era is reflecting the same things. You're right. With in Travis a Kelsey, very different way. Yeah. With hanging out with her girls on like um, Independence Day, yes. like the Heim girls and, and going to dinner with know, Blake and Ryan all and all of that. The, you know, 1989 was really the street style um, era as well. Yeah. We were getting paparazzi shots of her all the time. So it's really interesting that she's kind of mirroring that today with the fact that Travis Kelsey is the first time we've seen her publicly with a man yeah. in a really long time. I mean, obviously we saw her with Joe very rarely. It seems more like an intentional choice. It's a choice. And the, that choice only seems yeah. to be apparent with Calvin Harris yeah. and Travis Kelsey. But it's so satisfying because it really feels like, you know, as much as we love 1989, there was a lot of elements there where she hadn't found herself yet. Yes. She was really trying to prove something and she was really trying to um you know be be on top whereas now she she's doing it from a more authentic place in my opinion. Obviously she's in I her 30s agree. now. She's she's <clears throat> so much more secure in who she is. Yeah. Um and but also yeah the all of the shots with her it's it's very it's a similar mm. she's doing the same thing and I do wonder if yeah. that's purposeful. I do I wonder do as if well. she's if she's purposefully leaning back into her 1989 era of yeah. feeling this freedom and this yeah. just like I don't give a fuck I'm just a girl and which brings us to slut please let's oh. talk about that as a as a as a oh. track and how it's going to fit so well into that thing that you were talking about with you know the serial data blank space you yeah know, slut is another I think it's going to be another fight back media yeah obviously song. we don't know at this stage but yeah. like that just seems to be the obvious direction that yeah. it must be taking we could be wrong but like it it's, it's the quotation, quotation, the exclamation. Yeah. It's very much so clear in in the way that she stylized the title that this is probably going to be like what other people say. Yes. They're shouting slut, yes, and she doesn't identify with this with this name with this adjective that people have attributed to her in the same way that she doesn't identify with the character that she writes about oh in my blank God. space no i think we can all agree that 1989 and reputation vault tracks are definitely the most exciting in absolutely terms of, i really feel like she's gonna tell us things that she yeah. was too afraid to say at the time absolutely it's going to give us such more uh, of a diverse look into her mind and her feelings at yeah. the time and i oh think it my ties God, so into scared. what you were just saying about <laughs> Um, this sort of being the first time that she really had something to prove and that really is the difference between then and what we're seeing now even yeah. with her being out on the street and you know being photographed and all of that is that she had something to prove with 1989 but that's mm. also what makes it special because it was the first time she really set out to yeah. um, do something in this way yeah you know there are other examples of it again bringing up speak now she wanted to prove she could write an album by herself yeah. and like prove people wrong in that light but in terms of just breaking free of the mold that the media had created for herself but also also the image she had created for herself totally. in being the good girl all the yeah. time she had something to prove with 1989 yeah. she doesn't have that anymore no. she's literally like i've proven it that's what's so special about where we're, we're seeing her at today yeah is she's so sure of herself totally. and so sure of her career and like why not like she 
I feel is like we're getting, so successful we're now. We're getting the best of 1989 in this 1989 yeah. TV era without yeah. the insecurities. Without, Absolutely. Without, you know, with, without... She's a new person, but she's taking on that that fear that fierceness of 1989 yeah. and that confidence. I mean, you can even just tell... I feel like the way she has shot the album cover for 1989 TV, I know we've all died over that image, but the fact that she's smiling on it and um, we know that, you know, the original cover, she actually w- did have one version of it smiling. To do the new one with the smile, I think she's really sending a message there of her it means security so much. and her happiness. There was so much going on for her mentally and physically at the time <laughs> that... Um, you know she's she's grown so much stronger since then, yeah. and it's it's really emotional and really it touching. Is. She's she's just come so far, no, she even has. though she was at her peak then. She's she's so much more now. Yeah, and it's just it's it's. It's a special experience to get to go back and her reclaim this album yep. with that string. Yeah, absolutely. The next thing that I kind of want to launch into, which is a good segue from you bringing up the, yes, the, good, the 1989... Yes, I can't keep going without, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> from you bringing up the 1989 Taylor's version cover, yeah. is I really want to discuss, like, the, I guess, the themes mm. of it. Mm. Um, so with that 1989 TV cover, obviously there's been a lot of talk about the fact that she's gone with the beach theme yeah. versus, like, the city theme and... You know, I think that like our our first initial reaction was also also surprise at the mm. fact that that's what she's gone with, but it's really fascinating to look at because that theme of that that really has been there since the beginning, and bringing it back to my personal relationship with it as well. I think I might have said in some videos previously that like you know, getting an album in October in Australia, that's us going into summer. And really love that she's gone with this beach theme and I really identify with it. You know, originally it was this very, this 1989 is the New York album. You know, it's the year that she fully moved to New York and I guess made New York a bit of her identity. Which is also why it's deeply iconic that she opens with, with Welcome, Welcome to New, New York. York, like hell. And I really love that because I feel like it has a double meaning. Like it's like, Welcome to New York, like, you know, New York is my home and therefore me, but also welcome to this new sound. Welcome to this yeah. new version of me yeah. that New York has brought out. Yeah. Like I am no longer the same person and it's a whole new energy. It's a whole new identity. It's a, it's a whole new time in her career. And I think that that, that double meaning to welcome to New York is is so special and is so cool. Absolutely, I agree. It's uh, but the beach theme is really cool as well. And I, I, a lot of people have theories out there that you know, if 1989 was to be a double album, kind of like what the Karma Wall has maybe hinted at with the double 1989 mm. on it, um, that maybe that's where we'll get the nighttime New York um, imagery. Yes. Um, but if not, I think that this is still. I think it is still very 1989. It symbolizes. Yeah. You know, the, obviously the seagulls on the shirt were mm-hmm. always very beachy and also just the freedom that I think that she's trying to express. And this album, it's very light, yeah. you know, it's very it light. Is. There's no anger in this album in yes. terms of even the way that she is addressing the media. Like, Shake It Off is very like, I'm shaking yeah. it off. I've got this energy. I've got this music in my mind telling me it's going to be right. The music is that new soundtrack, which links back into Welcome to New York. And then like, even with Blank Space, she's like, okay, I'll play into your character. It doesn't affect me. You can't touch me kind of energy. Absolutely. And like, even with the, the more sadder songs, there's an acceptance to it. There's yeah. an overall kind of lightness no and this is another thing that we just absolutely love about this album is that it stands on its own in terms of its theme even just in terms Mm. of her writing about relationships Mm. there is no other album that she's done that has a similar energy to this no you know as we all know um the theory is that the vast majority of relationship oriented songs on this album are about harry styles i think swifties also love harry styles we know that they have a a friendly relationship even today And none of that is fully apparent on this album. There is, as you said, very much so an acceptance Mm. of the way that their relationship dynamic is. There's no songs on this album that really even indicate that she ever thought this is forever. It's even like some of the songs that touch on when they were in a relationship, Mm. even like um, the reminiscence that's present in like out of the woods and stuff. Yeah. There's sort of this like understanding that like Mm. 
we couldn't help but like be with each other for a time but we kind of knew, knew that this would wouldn't work. last forever yeah. and like that's okay I'm just happy I had this experience with you they all kind of have that similar kind of energy yeah but even she like on the media quite a lot with blank space and I know places and then even yes. the romantics has yeah. such a broad kind of it's a very broad we've, we've talked about this it feels mm. like it it feels like she's singing about things from like a distance or like almost like with an overview perspective rather yes. than being in the There's feeling. a lot of hindsight yeah. in 1989. Whereas like an album like Red is like she's in the thick she's of those thick emotions. Of which is a lot. Very, very different energy. I mean, even Out of the Woods is a completely hindsight song. And yeah. I, Wildest Dreams is kind of like, you know, say you'll remember me. Yeah. Like it's it's all got this distance to clean it. Clean is like, I'm finally clean, but this is how yeah. I felt in the past. Yeah, I think that the closest that we get to real heartbreak on this album is really songs like All You Had, Had to, to Do, do Was Stay, Day. which obviously, as we all know, is such a bop of a song. Yeah. Um, it's really fascinating that's a track five. If you don't know, Taylor has a tendency of putting her most vulnerable and personal song to her as the track five. Mm -hmm. All You Had to Do Was Stay is track five on this album. And I think that if you were to remove the production and like play it on a piano or something like that, you can really feel the emotion in yeah. it. It is quite sad, but I think that the... The fact that she has chosen mm. to make it poppy and mm. upbeat, I think even is an insight into where she was at yeah. with the relationship at the time of making this yeah. album. It's like, she's not in that feeling anymore. No. She doesn't need us to be in that sadness. Mm. It's just sort of like, it is all you had to do was stay. You know, yeah. it makes it feel a little bit like whatever, like yeah. I guess it's over now, but that's what, if yeah. you had stayed, this is what we could I mean, have been. and one of the vault tracks now is is it is it over now? Yes. Which is also feels like an after kind of math, or we don't talk anymore after kind of feeling. Yeah. Oh my god, I can't wait to see what kind of if there is more sadness or anger in the vault songs, or if we get a different energy at all. Um, I mean, because I do think that clean also offers a, a, a slightly different energy and yes. also a real like acceptance. It's such a good album closer. It I could talk forever about Taylor Swift album closes Same. because literally almost all of them are absolutely perfect for wrapping up the story that she's told yeah. in the album that they're on. But Clean as an album closer, yeah. oh my fucking God. I mean, I put it in the same category as Begin Again, right? Mm -hmm. Begin Again has that same energy of like heartbreak, 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 yeah. I'm moving on. Yeah. And Clean is so that, it's like it's exploring this narrative of a relationship that broke down and, mm -hmm. and what she felt like today or once upon a time about that particular breakup mm. but clean is very much so i'm good i'm good now I'm ready to and go. that's what's yeah. so interesting about go. her having that more emotional kind of production behind clean yeah because it's like you are feeling that sadness for the first time whilst also knowing that everything's okay yeah i'm I fully agree. good now i am clean totally and can we also just go back to new romantics because i do feel like that's a real standout on this album in terms of new romantics theme. is not fucking okay no what it's really fuck? not and it's it's actually quite a it's a quite a deep song really when you it's very it's very observational of like the it's current. very it's very um kind of reflective of yeah. the culture of our generation exactly i think she's done something really special in that song in being able to wrap up how a generation operates in love and romance while still making it fun yeah. and about her yeah. and how she's dealing with you know, I think like it kind of really links really well into Blank Space and Shake It Off actually as this kind of link because there's like the lyrics like, I could build a castle out of all the bricks they threw at me. Mm. Turning something, mm. you know, I feel like that lyric is saying a lot because it's like there's so many bricks, I could mm. build a castle. Yeah. Like that's how much hate yeah. I pop. Yeah. But also I could make something, I make really great things out yeah. of what they throw at me. And that links into Shake It Off, I think, right. just being like, Shake It Off, like, I can fucking do this. Yeah. But then yeah. also, like, you know, um, you know, the rumors are terrible and cruel, but honey, most of them are true. And, like, all that kind of stuff really links into blank space. Like, I've got a long list of ex lovers. Mm. They tell you I'm insane. Like, I think that, yeah. that song actually really does link a lot of the themes on it this does. album. And it wraps does. it all up into one. And I... I think that that's, it's an offensive song. I have more to say about this. Yeah. I think that it also really ties in so well because 
obviously with songs like Blank Space and Shake It Off, it is that there has been this um, narrative directed towards her specifically mm. about being a serial dater. Mm. But New Romantics is sort of like, we're, We're all, all doing, doing this. It. Like, what yeah. I'm doing in my dating life is not new. No. It's not weird for the people that no. I surround myself with, for people that are of We're a similar age romantic. to me. This is how we operate. And if you don't get that, yeah. like, you're honestly just outdated. Like, this is just not how we operate. Totally. But then also... I think it ties in so well with the general energy of the relationship yeah. explored on 1989 because once again, with those songs feeling more of la- like, mm. you know, we're probably only going to date for a time. You're not my forever, but we're going to be with each other anyway. Yeah. It ties in very well with the what's explored in New Romantics about mm. being like, we're, we're kind of a little bit more flippant with yes, love these days. Totally. We don't find someone at 20, no. marry them, settle down, and then we're in that relationship for the rest of our lives anymore. It's a very we're outdated going concept. we through the experiences. We put ourselves out there and yeah. we explore them. And sometimes the relationships that our generation is experiencing today yeah. is purely just an experience. We are not entering these no. relationships with the intent of being with these people forever. It's actually to inform us of what we might want in the future. And that's I kind agree. of what it feels maybe this relationship that she explores on 1989 was for her. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I knew that you weren't going to be here forever, but you were a learning lesson for me. And that's what we're all doing here. Totally. It wraps up the album coming as a bonus track. It's it's a perfect second album closer because it is the last bonus track as well. So it's kind of an alternative. Having that contrast to clean Mm. is actually really quite a lot. Can I talk about I Know Places for a second? Yes, please. Coming back as well to even like what was happening in her personal life at that time and and, and her sort of being at the height of her fame during Mm. this era too. I Know Places is really interesting because it also is the first time that she's sort of addressing her own fame in that way as well. And that in that way, it connects to songs like Blank Space and Shake It Off as well. You know, I I do really feel like even just outside of the the dating narrative around Mm her, um, 1989 really is the first time that we even see her writing songs about Taylor Swift, the pop star, yeah. or the you know the musician, and rather yeah. than just her very personal experiences. Totally. And I know places wraps in so well to that. Like she's literally like, I am now having to find ways to dodge paparazzi yeah. and 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 the media mm. in my relationships because there's so much speculation into my personal life that is very new and different for 1989 and yeah. that is so fucking under it i know places such is a good so song. underrated i am to, to call it that like i know places i know places can we also talk about all the different metaphors on this album mm. because there's so fucking many good ones so i know places there's the whole hunters mm, you know foxes the, the, yeah like yeah the yeah. hunters and the foxes metaphor and i know places clean is like she kind of dabbles in both the mm. clean from drugs but also clean with like water washing yeah. away the dirt kind of thing yeah um there's also this recurring lyric of ghost mm-hmm. she she brings up ghosts mm maybe four or five times yeah. on this album. No, there's actually so many more metaphors. Can I just say? Please, like, please. Style. <gasps> I'm so sorry. Style is a whole fucking metaphor about fashion and how she's comparing her relationship to things that go... Style that don't go out of style. too much. Style is too much. No, no I'm style, so sorry. I was having a full breakdown about it this morning about how she says like red lip and everything because I just think that... It's so, like, that's a look of hers and it's so iconic. And then for her to wrap it into a song is. But also to tie it into Harry Styles' surname, too. I mean, that's just a whole different thing again. Like, what the fuck did she do there? Daydream look in your eye. Can I also just say a tight little skirt? Tight little skirt is a little bit sexual. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry, but it is. Blank space is also kind of a metaphor. It kind of is. Like just this, like that part of it. Like obviously the whole thing is this satirical, hypothetical character that she's playing. Like she literally, the media wrote a character instead of fighting it. She was she like, that's interesting. Embraced Let's work it. With I'm that. so sorry. She's done that ever since. Mm. But Blank Space was a real starting point with that. She then did it with the whole snake metaphor mm-hmm. motif of reputation. Mm-hmm. She's like, you're calling me a snake? I'll be a snake. Yeah, literally. You're calling me a crazy bitch? I'll be a crazy bitch. Just to kind of point back at you how ridiculous this is yeah. that you're painting me out to be this person. But Blank Space, like, I've got a Blank Space baby and I'll write your name. That's a little <laughs> bit like... 
Can you believe she wrote that lyric? That's a lot. Um, out of the woods? Are we Metaphor. out of the woods? Metaphor. And actually, come to think of it, there's a lot of kind of like nature metaphors yeah. in this album. Like, out of the woods being like, you know, oh, are we in the clear yet? Like, yeah. is our relationship going to finally make it? Yeah. But then also the, the woods imagery mm. ties in so well with like the foxes and stuff the in hunting. I Know Places. Yes. But then even in like clean, you've got the rain. Yes. And stuff as well. Like, it's actually... That's so true. That's and, and like just also just the nature of the city as well, I think, because um, like I feel like, like I said, with Welcome to New York, I feel like yes. there's a double meeting, meeting yes. there. And like the, I think just like the motif of New York and what that means, like outdoors surroundings. And then we have urban legends coming on the vault track, which is really interesting. Suburb, is it a su- suburban su- legend? Sorry, suburban, suburban. So once again, just like the bigger kind of environment. Yeah, um, that's a lot. I forgot that that was a yeah. vault track coming. Oh my God, suburban legends. Yes. Suburban legends, what hell. the hell is she going to say? I there? honestly feel like that's got to be a little bit more like the the media narrative stuff yeah. again, like is, is her life becoming a bit of a, Ooh, you know, like this character legend. the media creates, like, mm. I like this that. has become my legend kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why we love this album so much being the first time she works with Jack Antonoff. If you don't know, we have a very loving attitude towards yes. Jack Antonoff. We yes. just love him. <laughs> um, and, you know, You Are In Love uh, was a song that Taylor wrote about Jack and his relationship at the time. Yes. And we just feel like it's such a special song because it's like Taylor observing this love. Um I didn't mean to say another track name then, but like in observing that love yes, that Jack yes. had there. And I think it really, it really ties nicely into the collaboration that they had at the time and the beginning of You're that right. relationship and how strong it has become. Something Ooh. else that I absolutely love about that song and I feel like I simply need to draw attention to is oh. one of my favorite Taylor Swift lyrics of all say. time and is where she says, and you are in love. Um, you understand now why they lost their minds and fought the wars and why I've spent my whole life trying to put it into words. It really feels like she's breaking the fourth wall there yeah. to be like, like this is literally why I do what I, I do. I do. What this I do. is why I have five albums of songs that explore relationships because mm-hmm. understanding what love is mm-hmm. is literally what, what she's, she's here doing, for. What she's literally doing, processing that, understanding that. That and, is a and the fact that lyric. watching Jack in his relationship was one of those breakthroughs yeah. for her is so special. Like their friendship has been so evident since the beginning. There's one other thing I want to touch on with 1989, which I think is important. I feel like the vocals on 1989 was a shift in her, in her, the way she sung. And particularly in the tour, which we'll talk about when we watch that, but I really feel like she gets this like power in her vocals yeah. during 1989. Like, I love the way she sings on this album. It's one of Absolutely. my favorite things. I feel like I feel like that's really evident in like even in like the outro of like style, like just take me out. That kind of stuff. Yes. That the ad libs and the backing vocals, like every song builds so incredibly on 1989 it's just pop perfection no it is it absolutely is i mean once again there is a reason this is the most awarded pop album in history yeah absolutely it's just it it really is perfection everything about it is absolute perfection yeah it's illegal we could actually sit here and talk about this album for a million years because (laughs) there's so so much, to much to say uh, and like oh my god no i'm so sorry we have to talk about the hair the hair oh, the hair <laughs> really bold and brave of her to cut her hair off for 1989 and i think was another way of telling us that this is a bit of a rebirth or a new yeah. person like welcome to new york welcome to this new energy it was a whole new look that we she had created loved. this image for herself with her first albums of being the girl with like the long blonde hair. Yeah. Um, obviously she did kind of switch it up a little for red, cutting the bangs and then sort of straightening her hair for the yeah. whole era. But it was still like 
the long blonde hair absolutely. kind of image. So to cut it off was absolutely a very bold move. Was she was changing up her image completely yeah. with that. And I love that she hasn't cut her hair again, but she still has been pinning it up for the 1989 yeah. TV era. I I'm so excited to see what else we may get for the 1989 yeah. Taylor's version era in terms of maybe Another like a music video, video or something like that. I think needs a music video in my opinion. Because I, I, I honestly want to see what she does with her hair. Yeah. Like, you know, because with that pinned up style, yeah. like I wonder if that will carry through anything else that she might do for this new 1989 yes. era so fucking excited i literally cannot believe we get it so soon it makes me so ill it makes me so oh. ill guys we were thinking that maybe to end off this um video we could do a quick ranking, ranking. of the album yes and you know if anything else comes up while we're while we we're will doing discuss. that we can discuss we will discuss my top five which at this stage very rarely changes, yeah. is my number one is clean. Yeah. My number two is all you had to do was stay. My number three is out of the woods. Yes. They are permanent. Like, I I don't think that's changed since the day that this album came out. Yeah. My number four is how you get the girl. I am such a how you get number the girl four stan. Number four is how you get the girl. Okay. Number four is how you get the girl. I love it so much. The world is going to fathom yeah. when we get Taylor's version. Like, people are finally going to see what the fuck has been going on there this whole time. And my number five is I Wish You I Would. I feel like I need you to, to explain why, how you get the girls number four. You know, sometimes it's just a feeling. Okay. Sometimes it's just a feeling. Is There's like, something about the, the production, production and the melodies mm. in it that I just love so much. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But I also just love that it's just like sarcastic. <laughs> I just think it's so slow that she's just like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Like, What's your five? How do you get the girl? I wish you would. I wish you would. Okay. Yep. Hold it there for a okay, second. Okay, great. It's going to go off my gut today. Cool. That's what I'm feeling today. Great. Okay, so my top five are Wildest Dreams. Yes. Blank Space. Yes. Out of the Woods. Mm. Style. Mm. And You Are In Love. Yep, that tracks a lot for you. Wildest Dreams is one of my, it's in like my top five or six Taylor Swift songs ever. Like, I just think it's the most magical thing I've ever heard. Okay, so number six, what's yeah. yours? Mine is style. Okay, mine's New Romantics. Okay, oh yes, oh yes, yes, yes. Wildest Dreams is my number seven. Okay, that fends my soul, but it's okay. Yeah. Uh, I wish you would. Once again, I just need you guys to know that like, ranking is always insulting. Yeah. And even it. the songs at the bottom, like this is my stand album. Yeah. Like they're at the top. Of like every song. We understand. We all collectively understand that. We really. understand. We understand. My number eight is This Love. Nice. Mine's mm. clean. No. Oh. See, that insults me. I know. It's so funny. I know that clean is a stand. Like, it's a fandom favorite. I don't know why. Uh, maybe I'll fathom with 1989 TV. But I think that it's just never been something that I personally relate to. I understand. And I know that you don't necessarily either. But I think that I really have to have some sort of connection to a song for it to be like my number one or two. Yeah. Okay. I have just never heard anything as spectacular as Clean. Like yeah. in the same way that Wildest Dreams yeah, Wild tops like your overall Taylor songs, Clean is that for me. If you yeah. don't know, like Clean is my number four of all time yeah. Taylor Swift songs. I, I just die over it. And honestly, like something that we barely touched on in this particular video <laughs> is the image and heat feature and how much I love that. Yeah. Number nine, mm. mine is blank space. Mine is welcome to New York. And that has, that's a, that's a current like move up for me. So number 10, number 10 is this love. Oh, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mine is you are in love. Yeah. 11, shake it off. I love Shake It Off. You are a bit of a Shake It Off stan, aren't yes, you? Yes, it's so good. Yeah. Mine is I Know Places. Yeah, my next one is I Know Places. Yeah, okay, cool. Oh, yeah, cool. Lovely, yeah. lovely. Yeah. Next, I have Wonderland. Okay, lovely. We're getting, yeah, I, I'm getting close to that. Mine is All You Had To Do Was Stay. My next one. I oh, know, I'm sorry. That's dropped. It's probably the biggest dropper for me when I first listened to 1989. I thought that it was one of my favorites, but I realized it's not. So I don't know sorry. how to cope with that information. I yeah. really yeah. don't. I really, really don't. I'm sorry. No, it actually gets worse for you. Though, okay. For oh, God. Okay. Next one is... We're at the bottom four now. Uh, yeah, I just did my bottom... my Like, my last... My fourth. So, you go your one. Oh, New yeah. Romantics. Oh, see, that offends me. Anyway. That's yeah. Fine. Wonderland is my third last favorite. Mm -hmm. Mine is Welcome to New York. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my second last is How You Get the Girl. 
no we differ so much when it comes to 1989 rankings yeah. like there are so many songs that we are exactly the same as like our, our top three Taylor Swift songs of all time are I'm identical same. I know um, and, and we do vibe a lot of the time in that way but 1989 I don't know we're just polar opposites and I think it's because like 1989 is your f- number one and it's like not even close to my number one yeah so it's so yeah. interesting that vibe and I think also because yeah. like I do just lean towards maybe the singles because I don't know I just think they're so good yeah yeah no I understand I understand but How You Got The Girl really does not do much for me and in saying that I still love it it's yeah. a Taylor Swift song I would think that you'd be relating to how you get the girl right now. Maybe you need to go and have a moment. Yeah, with maybe that I do. Because it needs to fucking listen. <laughs> My second last is Shake It Off. Yeah, fair enough. Um, once again, an absolutely will... fucking offensive. Oh, yeah, our last is Bad, Bad Blood. Blood. Yeah. yeah. Both are offensive songs. It's just that, you know, you know, Bad Blood being at the bottom for me is surprising given that I, I do tend to gravitate towards an angrier song. I do like an angry song. Mm. But Bad Blood just doesn't do a lot for me in that space. Bad Blood is really important for the like cultural impact of um, 1989, especially with the Kendrick Lamar feature. And, and the, the music squad video, and the music and the video. Squad. Like it obviously had its place at the time for, you know, definitely launching her into her, her career. But I also think that that's the, song and the music video that got her the most amount of hate Mm. because it was so model-esque the whole thing she got a lot of hate towards you know her squad being all about image based yeah her friends are very image based then there was also the whole Katy Perry kind of feud yeah and um the song maybe potentially being about Katy Perry and I just think it was the most controversial thing like even Kendrick Lamar was a little bit um controversial yeah. uh, sound wise but I also think it launched her into a new bracket of people so you know sometimes right. those kind of songs and those kind of things are the most impactful and the most divisive for a reason yeah totally it's kind of like that saying like any publicity is good publicity yes. it's like there yeah. is a controversy around it but it's also like what you know maybe pricks people's attention who yes maybe have otherwise not really paid attention and to I her think thus far for that time in her career it did what it was meant to do yeah um it also maybe was one of the catalysts to her being overexposed and also having the downfall that she had yeah um because there was always a, already, already a bit of a history with drama and then the Kanye West drama on top yeah. of that was a lot. Yeah. So I, I think Bad, Bad Blood is an interesting one to dissect. Wow. So that's pretty much why we love 1989. Oh my God. I hope that you guys like this video. Yeah. Please let us know. Like really let us know if you like this because, you know, we need to know if we should keep doing it for the rest of the album. Totally. And we are just so excited for 1989 Taylor's version. I just know that I'm going to walk away from this video and be like, oh my God, I've got to say this. Oh my God, I've got to I- I know, oh there's just so much to say. That Things so that we can address in our next video, which will be the 1989 Taylor's version reaction. And guys, can I just say as well, we're really excited to actually be at home for this reaction. Well, we'll see you guys then. We love you so much. Thanks love for you. watching. Please let us know why you love 1989 down Please. below. Can't wait to read yes. your comments and let's all get excited Pumped. for this amazing experience that we're about to embark on. Oh my god. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.